All right. So this is Mobility and Inclusion. I am Harut Markarian, and my guest today is the Hay House author and motivational speaker, Dana Liskang. Dana is the author of her book, Falling Up, My Wild Ride from Victim to Kick-Ass Victory, with the foreword written by Dr. Wayne Dyer. Dana had the honor of speaking on stages with Dr. Wayne Dyer, Anita Mujani, Scarlett Lewis, Immaculate Iligabiza, and Kate McKinnon. In 2014, Dana received the Hero of Forgiveness Award given by the Worldwide Forgiveness Alliance. She currently is an inspirational speaker and the coach in independence living, skills, and spinal cord injury recovery. Dana, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me on. I really appreciate this. Uh, happy to have you on our show. Uh, so uh, I was reading a little bit about you and uh, you were thrown off the cliff. Yes. Um, I was in the United States Navy at the age of, I joined at the age of 18 and at the age of 19, I was raped and thrown off Sunset Cliffs in San Diego where I sustained a spinal cord injury. It broke C1 through C5. You only have seven bones in your neck and I broke five of them plus a traumatic brain injury and have, the reason my book title is Falling Up is because I feel as though I was thrown off the cliff and I've been falling up ever since. I love your uh, book title, by the way. Thank you. It's, it's, it's great. Um, so uh, I was going to ask you, so I was struggling when I was putting together the questions. I'm like, okay, what should I ask her? You know, how should I, uh, you know, guide the conversation? But then I was like, okay, the doctors told you apparently that there's no hope for you to walking again, right? Right. Uh, so um, take us through that mindset. You know, what, what, what took to going from the doctors telling you there's no hope to walking again? Well, the doctors told my parents I wasn't going to live through the night. And they actually didn't even sew up a couple of spots in my stomach. They just packed it with gauze because they didn't expect me to survive. Mm -hmm. And when I did, they're like, well, she's going to be uh, mentally disabled and on a respirator the rest of her life because I was also in a coma. And at one point in rehab, you know, that it was just like all this dismal stuff. And I, when I woke up from the coma and I realized I was paralyzed from the neck down, I didn't want to be that way, obviously. Nobody does. And I started biting on the respirator and biting on the respirator until finally somebody gave me a chance to breathe. And I was able to teach myself how to breathe on my own again, against all odds. So from that point on, I was like, what else are the doctors wrong about? And that's where that mindset came in was if they were wrong over here, then they could also be wrong over here. And the nurses, when I was, on the regular rehab floor, we're like, well, you're always going to need a attendant. You'll never be able to take care of yourself. You'll never be able to dress yourself, shower. Three years of a lot of hard work, I managed to be able to take care of myself. And when the spinal cord swelling and shock wore off, I was the actual damage at my spinal cord is C4 and C5, where I had no finger function and both hands and I had biceps and traps. I had basically three muscle groups to get myself around. Three years of hard work and determination, I proved the nurses wrong. So they were wrong again. Again, that mindset keeps getting pushed forward to, well, I know that these are professionals and they studied it and they're here for my own good. However, it's possible that they're wrong and they, then the PTs and the doctors were saying, well, you'll never walk again. You can stand in braces. You can do all that. And I found Wayne Dyer's book, Manifest Your Destiny, in early 90s, mid 90s. Read that and went, hmm, this guy says I can manifest my own destiny. From there, I started doing his meditations. I started getting into nutrition, holistic medicine, therapies and trying it all, and I was able to come 10 years post-injury, I was able to take my first steps without braces. I'm like, ah, they were wrong once again. So I just kept 
driving forward with this mindset. I'm like, yes, they're professionals and they have to cover themselves by saying, you can't do this because if, well, if we say you can and you don't, then we're liable. So it's not that they're trying to be evil or they're trying to hold you down. They just legally are bound to their oath and playing it safe. I see. Well, that's, uh, that's part of the uh, problem. As in, even nowadays, uh, the legality of things, uh, how it can uh, really you know, hinder the, the progress of someone or something. Yes, because if someone, if a doctor tells a lot of people that you will never walk again, they'll believe it and they won't even try. Exactly, exactly. So I'm uh, I'm writing my book right now. Uh, it's uh, it's a book uh, regarding uh, uh, people with mobility challenges or any challenges for that matter, and how robotics can pay, uh, play a good role in their lives. And the first chapter of my book is mindset to overcome challenges. Ah. Oh. So I, uh, I relate to what you're saying quite well. And I actually teach that in my house as well. Um, in terms of, you know, train your mindset to manifest the best that there is for you. So uh, that's a great story. Thank you for sharing that with us. Hey, you're welcome. Thank you. Um, so what do you usually say? You're a motivational speaker. So when you speak to people, uh, what do you usually tell them to overcome their physical, mental, or emotional, uh, um, what do you call it, uh, dealings of their lives, the hard, the hard times? Um, I, I say appreciate the hard times because that's what made you who you are. And it will eventually be a gift that you're not seeing right now, even though it's really hard to see the gift in the tragedy. Mm -hmm. like, I, I understand that being raped and thrown off a cliff is horrific. However, what that did was make me more relatable. And there's so many people in the world who have experienced sexual trauma, male and female, that I, I can talk to them and, and I, I have been able to forgive which has set me free emotionally because forgiveness is more about releasing yourself from negative emotions and anger and hate and revenge because those don't help you heal. Mm -hmm. Those help deteriorate your body. And, and you will go to a certain point, but there's going to be a wall. And when I was able to forgive at 21 years post-injury, I was able to go around that wall instead of keep hitting it. And so what I, I tell people is forgiveness of self, no matter what is going on in your life. I mean, we all have something we're ashamed of or have regrets for, or someone's done something to us or someone has hurt us. Maybe we've hurt someone else. Mm -hmm. And forgiveness is a key. It's a key to the oh, unlocks your gateway to healing. Absolutely love what you're saying. Forgiveness is a key factor, definitely, in our, in our lives. And so, never giving up. Excuse me? Never giving up. It's just... Absolutely. Absolutely, yes. Part of it. 100% agree. Um, so, you wrote the book, and uh, Wayne Dyer, Dr. Wayne Dyer, who's passed away, right? Um encouraged you to write the book correct yes. to tell your story uh, so what did he say that uh, you know made you say okay i'm gonna write this book and what was holding you back before i never wanted to write a book before <laughs> and when wayne dyer dr wayne dyer says we're gonna give you a book deal are you gonna tell him no no of course not <laughs> right it's through hay house and I'm like, that would be like, now, are you familiar with Tony Robbins? No. Tony Robbins is another really big inspirational speaker, motivational leader. And it would be like him saying to someone, I'm going to give you a book deal and then telling him no. You just, you don't say no. You, you would be looking a gift horse in the mouth. And, and another 
you know, there's a quote that a really good friend of mine says a lot. His name is Tony Rodriguez. He says, your story is not yours to keep. It's yours to share because your story could unlock someone else's prison. Yeah. And I think that's where Wayne was coming from. Other than, you know, Wayne was like, you, I forgave. And that was close to his heart was forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And because I could forgive such a heinous crime and forgive the Navy for protecting him and not me, that he was like, you're going to write a book. And I said, okay, I'm not a writer. He said, don't worry about that. We will get you a, a co-author to help you write it. And that's how that happened. You just don't say no to someone's presenting you with a diamond ring. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And I'm, I'm glad you did it. I'm actually going to buy the book and read it. And now that I got to know, know you. Um, and uh, thank you for our friend Eileen, who introduced me to you. Oh, she's amazing. I love her. <laughs> she is. She is. Um, so uh, you have brown Sicard syndrome. Is that uh, correct? Yeah. brown Sicard syndrome is where you're, I have an incomplete injury, which means I have sensation and or function below my level of injury. And it's also brown Sicard. So I've got straight down the middle, I've got more sensation on the right and more function on the left. And I haven't always had this much hand function. Um, I did stem cells in China in 2004. Mm -hmm. And shoot, that's, I can't even remember how many years post-injury that is at this point. It's just all blurring together. <laughs> I'm almost 30 years post-injury, so you can do the math there. Wow. That's, uh, that's amazing. And I'm still recovering. So that's the really cool one. Like this thumb function right there. Uh -huh. Brand new as of January 8th this year. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So uh, you, I'm, I'm assuming you go through some sort of uh, physical therapy? I don't really do physical therapy, but I do have a personal trainer. Okay. Like the hospitals don't believe in... Um, recovery in spinal cord injuries mm -hmm. so i just left them behind yeah. I'm like they don't believe in it that's okay i do i'm gonna go do my own thing so that's why i've done so many different things and and have been searching for so many different things and when one thing stops working i find another one and if that stops working i find another one and it's a, it's a lot about persistence perseverance mm -hmm. and patience because it try to rush it. I've tried to put dates and times and I'm going to walk by this day or I'm going to leave this chair by that time. You can set them as a goal, but understand that you might have to reset them yeah. Yeah. and try not to get discouraged in the meantime. Like seriously, a lot of people would not be all excited about just that. Right. Mm -hmm. But what that did for me is I can now work a can opener. Awesome. I can now grip my push rim a little bit better. Like every little increment counts because that's going toward your freedom. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I can I can only imagine how much of a of a success that was for you. You know that little thumb movement that oh, maybe I would take for granted, but for someone like you who who I mean that that is a huge thing, right? Yeah, I'm all proud of that. Yeah. No, <laughs> when I, I, figured it out on an airplane. I was like this for <laughs> two hours. <laughs> so you said, as you said, uh, doctors or hospitals don't believe in uh, uh, physical therapy. Is that what you said? Uh, it's not, no, they don't believe in spinal cord injury recovery. Oh, okay. They're okay, like, so you're, if, you're a spinal cord injury. Is, this is your level of injury. This is where you're going to be the rest of your life. Okay. Which is ridiculous for me as, as a person who's hearing it and I don't have, <laughs> They're starting, I think, getting more on board with the robotics uh -huh. and using it for therapy. I went and got assessed for the Indigo system in Seattle last year. And because I am not the right level of injury, that I was not allowed to use it. Because it, hmm. it's FDA approved for T4 and below, and I'm at C4. Ah. So because I wasn't the right level, never mind the fact that I've got more function than your average T4, 
Mm -hmm. which is a paraplegic. You probably know this, but your yes. other audience may not. T being thoracic, C being cervical. Mm -hmm. um, they, that didn't matter. What mattered was the level of injury. So I think that there's more coming about. They're starting to open their minds more with the robotics and the new implants that they've got that are bypassing nervous systems i think that minds are opening a little more mm -hmm. but the ability to heal yourself from a spinal cord injury i don't think they're open to that yet okay like, uh, minds well, matter they're not open <laughs> to that yet yeah so i was uh, i was going to ask this question later but since we're talking about it now uh, so if they don't believe in that that means the insurance doesn't cover it is that right correct okay so for you and for your case, what kind of insurance did you use or were you able to use at all? To I had to pay out of pocket address? and I still pay out of pocket for um, my personal trainer. Mm -hmm. I am a 100% service connected veteran and that takes us back to the hospital in the initial stages of my injury where the Navy came in and they said, you've got two choices. You can take your right to remain silent in the court of law. You'll be 100% service connected through the Veterans Administration for the rest of your life. You will have school benefits. You will have this paycheck for the rest of your life. You will have these benefits for the rest of your life. And you also have the choice to take this to court, but you will lose and you will get nothing. And at that point, I just started breathing on my own and I took the right to remain silent. I later learned like 21 years post injury that I didn't have to take my right to remain silent and that that was just bullying tactic to keep the lid on it. Mm -hmm. It was sweeping it under the carpet of how it happened. And the Navy still tried to fight against my service connection. And so it was, it was all a lie to me just to keep me quiet. And that's another reason why I wrote the book for other people was because staying silent is more hurtful for you than anything. And find someone you trust, find someone that you can openly be vulnerable with and talk about it. And that'll, that's the first step in recovery. So, yeah. As far as the money goes, I have been very fortunate to have a steady pay income and I have bought and sold real estate to pay for my stem cells. I've sold two houses that I lived in. Wow. Yeah, it's, uh, it's you know, listening to your story and listening how it unfolded really kind of drives me up the wall a little bit and uh, excuse my... Uh, uh, expression <laughs> uh, I'm not I'm not someone who's politically correct so that got me into trouble a few times uh, <laughs> I'm definitely not politically correct <laughs> um, and uh, so I was gonna ask you uh, all that aside you've been using some mobility devices correct yes and uh, you I saw you on a wheelchair and I saw another picture of you on your website uh, holding canes mm-hmm um, so do you still use those? Yes. Okay. And what would be the ideal, uh, I guess, mobility platform for you that you would want that you'd say, if I would, I would have this mobility device, it, things would get much easier for me. If I had just a brace that would help with drop foot and not go clear up my calf. Oh, just like right below your mm -hmm. your calf muscle mm -hmm. and just enough to get that foot up and don't don't they uh, already have that i thought they i don't know it's not offered to me yet <laughs> oh okay okay all right i'm gonna i'm gonna research that for you i'm gonna let you know okay okay um i know and... there's lots of different afos and i had an AFO that was designed for me out of the CI or San Diego VA. Uh -huh. and it did a really good job and it was shorter and I just haven't been able to get anyone to make that again for me. 
So I, I'm not sure what the opposition is. And also, um, if there was like the robotics just for one leg to help retrain that, mm -hmm. that would be helpful. I was really hopeful for the, the indigo system because I know that if you're walking improperly, you're still training your brain to walk improperly. And the robotics gives that new neural plasticity that you're laying neural pathways down and it's, it's teaching your brain to walk correctly. Yes. And, and you know more than I do about this, but I, and I just have a little bit of knowledge about it. And I have used, um, out of San Diego, they had a robotic system on a treadmill mm -hmm. and a game you could watch and walk around and walk through cows, which was kind of cute. <laughs> so, and I walked on the treadmill and that was really great. But it just wasn't practical, and I, I really want a practical use. Mm -hmm. And because I've got good function in one leg, I was actually thinking about this this morning, this morning with mirror neurons, and I'm like, how can I get in front of a mirror and move my left leg like they do with your hands? You see yeah. that? Yeah. yeah. With the mirror neurons on your hands, how can I do that with my legs? So. Uh, was my thought this morning as I got out of bed. Interesting. So I'm constantly thinking about what can I do next. I'm constantly going, how can I do this better? How can I improve on this? And and how can I make this easier for someone else and not take 30 years to, to heal? Yeah, absolutely. And that's that's where everything starts, you know? You think about, uh, you think of something and that, that thought is registered in your brain and then eventually it manifests through some some way right, right. Um, and that's what we're trying to do with with our company the uh, obviously the goal of this of this podcast is to raise awareness uh, that's one and two we're trying to uh, you know there are a lot of good companies out there doing good work and producing these you know good robotic platforms to help people with mobility challenges and we we kind of want to do uh, something similar but instead of competing with them, we're trying to create new stuff. And yeah, so uh, it's gonna be, I, I think it'll be fun. And my, uh, my colleague, uh, the, the uh, person who started the company with me, Mike, he's in law enforcement and um, he's been pretty excited. So we're actually really, uh, uh, really looking forward to this journey. And we're so glad that we have uh, good mentors in this community like Eileen and Vince that are kind of like guiding us through uh, through the community in a good way. Oh, Eileen is amazing. Talk about perseverance. I'm like, that girl has got it. I'm yeah. like, she just speaks to my heart because like, she's the first person I've met that has spent as many or more years working toward the same goal as like I have, I'm like, I'm still working on being as upright as she is, but she, it, it was finally someone I could just connect with. Yeah, yeah. Whereas being in the veteran community, I've had a lot of people that was are with spinal cord injuries. They're like, what are you doing? You're wasting your money. You're wasting your time. You're chasing a pipe dream. Just be in a chair like us play wheelchair sports and call it good. I'm like, okay, but, I want to do a little more. Yeah. And so I've played my wheelchair sports and I've done my skiing and I've, I've taken cross country adaptive cross country skiing. Nice. And, and I've been progressing that into stand up skiing and other people have started following behind me because they didn't know that they could stand up and cross country ski. Mm -hmm. They're like, Whoa. So I started with sit skiing and then I put, uh, skis on the bottom of a walker and leg braces. And then I, when I was out of the leg braces and then I was like, uh, how can I have poles? So I got downhill ski equipment for adaptive skiing that have the outriggers on the bottom. And I attached kid snowshoes on them so that I have the stability in the snow with the crutches. Yeah. And there's other downhill equipment that I collaborated on and got that for Nordic. And now there's side stick crutches that have baskets on them for sand and snow. So you're not sinking in and you've got the stability. It's like, and I've taken all of that up to the Nordic and end up becoming after 30 years of 
participating, I became an instructor. And Amazing. it was just like really interesting and fun. And innovation, like necessity is the key to life, right? Mm -hmm. So I, what you're doing is absolutely amazing because you are going to take the robotic side of it and the mechanical side of it and help us help us get there faster. You're going to help us get there further faster with laying down neural pathways that people don't quite understand yet. It's pretty amazing science. Absolutely. That's our goal. And as you're talking, I'm realizing that, you know, you could be a good, a good, uh, uh, consultant for us. <laughs> uh, and, um, no, uh, seriously, everything that you've done with the skis uh, and how you progressed that yeah. through time, it's, it all came out of necessity, right? Out of something that you wanted to do. It was something I wanted to do and it wasn't available. And I was right. like, this is dumb. Why is this not available? Okay, <laughs> okay we'll make it. Yeah, and exactly. now, you know, there was a gal that had EMS and there's some other people who are blind that are now using the equipment. Mm -hmm at the veteran event that I designed and helped create. That's awesome, that's amazing. Some of it I designed and some of it, we just repurposed downhill equipment. Yep. Someone was once asked me when I was just starting the company, I, I, he asked me, what if you uh, designed something that other people, you know, stole or not steal, but you know, just copied the idea, right? Like, okay, whatever, you know, uh, we're all here to create. If someone wants to copy the idea, he copies the idea. I, I move on to the next idea, you know. There's a, a lot of people operate in, uh, in competition thought, right? Yeah. Unfortunately. And, and maybe, maybe fortunately, I don't know. I'm not going to talk to that. But I, uh, I tend to uh, focus on creation more and, you know, just put my thought into something if it's successful, great. If it's not successful, we find a way to vary it or modify it in a way that is beneficial to the user. And, yeah. and making, it, making it applicable, you know, it's very key here. Because every time I pitch an idea to Mike, he comes back, he, says, he, he asks me the same question. He goes like, okay, what's the application? And <laughs> my idea dies there, you know? Oh, no. I can't really think of the application, but it's... Uh, but it's it's good to have to have him around, you know. He keeps me because, as a robotics engineer, you know, I want to do all this cool stuff, uh, which I see more and more happening with these other companies. You know, they come up with this kick-ass product, very cool. But I'm like, then you think about the cost and the time it takes to for training a, a patient in that platform, and you know, at the end of the day, you go like, eh, it's not really worth it, you know. Uh, so it's a give and take, and Mike's Mike actually is good at keeping me grounded. <laughs> I, you know, I've tried the electrical stimulation. I guess there's like something that you can you can wear up on your just below your knee, and it stimulates the foot flexor. But mm -hmm. what the, it, it it a it hurts. <laughs> I can feel it, and b it like keeps my leg from working the next day. Mm -hmm. The next uh, I see. Day. The nervous so there's a side effect after you take it off yeah yeah and so i was like well that's not gonna work out yeah 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 so it's it's uh unfortunately it'll take uh some trial and error before you come up with the ideal product i guess so uh this uh, brings me to my last question to you uh and i think it's the question that i was looking for the most uh, you received a forgiveness award. Yes. That's uh, uh, it's the first time I was hearing about that there's a forgiveness award. And it's the first I, time I heard about it too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but because, because the topic of forgiveness means, uh, means a lot to me, uh, I kind of want to ask you, you know, um, so you kind of told us, I, 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 maybe you didn't tell us, but I'm assuming why you took the uh, forgiveness award, why they, you know, gave it to you. But uh, talk to us how you went from this horrid experience from this guy or whoever it was that did that to you to 
coming to a state where you completely forgiven him? It took, um, it was a process. Uh, I, and I, I met Wayne Nyer on a cruise just to tell him thank you. And, and I manifested myself at a dinner with him and he started telling us a story about John of God in Brazil and how John of God did this amazing healing with him. And he suggested that I go. And I was like, okay, he hasn't steered me wrong yet. So I went and no one touched me. It was like, like in, on this, it, it's a lot of woo woo stuff that I don't understand. I just know that while I was there, I asked to see with my eyes closed. And the gift was to, to open my heart and forgive myself and forgive my attacker. And there was this huge release and peace that came over me when I did that. And yeah, I still get angry and I still get worked up and I have to go back and forgive again. But forgiveness is a process. It's not just like you forgive once, okay, you're done. It's not like that. Yeah. It, it's it's a process and because it was such a heinous crime that I had forgiven and it was I genuinely found the love in my heart I don't know what that 18 year old boy's life was like all I know is that a child of the age of 18 who will commit that heinous of a crime to rape someone, choke them, and throw them off a cliff. Something happened in his life early on, unless he was just a complete sociopath to begin with. Mm -hmm. And this I don't know. I don't know his psychological background, know anything else. I do know that he was just a young boy. I know that you go into the military and you're supposed to be all adult at 18. But the reality is we are still children. Our brains are still developing. And we have a ways to go. So I tried to look at it from a standpoint of what happened to him to make him do such a horrible thing. And how can I propel myself forward in life? And it's like having the umbilical cord attached to you and him or whoever's hurt you and your energy is draining into them. Like the mom's energy is in going into the child through the umbilical cord. They're getting their nourishment through the umbilical cord. Mm -hmm. And when that umbilical cord's cut, the baby has to go, oh, I have to do this on my own and I'm taking my personal power. And so you take your personal power back with forgiveness. And I, they did, actually, the Forgiveness Alliance brought someone from the military who had uh, mm -hmm. dealt with a lot of women who have been raped in the military just to make sure that I was the real deal. And upon meeting me, she was like, oh my God, I doubted you. And I do not doubt you now. So That's great. Yeah. That's great. I can, you know, I can't even imagine what, what, it, what it's been like for you to go through that experience. But uh, I'm glad you're here today. I'm, not, I'm glad we're having this, uh, this conversation together. Um, you have really... Uh, opened my eyes. I hope you did for everyone else who is listening or going to listen. Uh, and I wish you well going forward. Thank you, uh, thank you very much for your time. And uh, I wanted to also thank everyone who tuned in today or are going to uh, listen to this um, episode. Uh, they can go to markianrobotics.com and they can go to the mobility and inclusion tab and they'll find all our podcasts there, all our episodes there. Um, we'll see you next time. And until then, know that there is a power within each one of us that is bigger than any hurt we feel. Yes. Thank you so much, Dana. Thank you. Okay. Goodbye. Bye.